Hello, this is Trofty Trofty, and today we are playing. Okay, this is a strange glitch. It is super funny, and apparently Pamuk also agrees. Anyway, today we are playing another episode of Great Tech New Horizons Season 2 with my green pants. And in this episode, we're gonna do a lot of things. One of the first things I'm going to do is. Fix our storage sol uh, situation a bit. For that, we are actually going to use this guy. Yeah, you come here. You, my friend, come here. And we're gonna use these guys a lot, and some of these guys, and these guys. So, yeah. First things first, let's place this guy. And let me just get some items. Some frequently used items. Uh, let's get those guys here. Yeah. And apparently you are... Okay. Let's get those. And I will just partition stuff like this. And it will take a bit, a bit. And let's actually also use those guys here. And okay, that should be enough. Okay, this cell is partitioned like this. And let me just get an ME this and yeah the cats are playing with something okay for example let's get a fi quartz fiber and this and if i place this guy and for example i want to place some ant stone to it i can't but if i place and some iron I simply can, and where is the iron now? Ah, because I'm searching for a chest. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. So yeah, the partitioning works like this. And let me just took those and place those here. And this will be uh, priority 10, let's say. And I will just do a lot of things, a lot of partitioning with this, and try to empty this wall as much as possible. And also, I might fill this area a bit. And yeah, that happened. Anyway, I got rudely interrupted by one giant and one tiny cat. But apparently we are going to do a lot of partitioning, a lot of maybe this crafting, and I will also going to demolish these storage cells and upgrade them with at least 4 or 18, uh, 4 or 16k storage cells. Probably 4 or 16. I will just have to look at it. And one more thing. Uh, for example, Let's say I place this here. And actually I have a 16k storage cell. Yeah. Let's say we place this here. And if I decide to uh, do this. And yeah. It place everything to here. So we can simply empty discs by this. And yeah. This is not a perfect solution, but this works. And we are currently doing this. Yeah. I will just partition a bunch of things. And then we are going to do stuff here yeah and also 
in the same way, we have fluid storage cells. Those are exact same way. Uh, they do. They get here and they work like a tank. We have two versions of every K uh, storage, uh, which one of is this one type uh, per fluid, and other is five types per fluid uh, cell. So uh, for certain uh, fluids, uh, like for example benzene or Actually, I might store benzene in a normal tank again, because it's a fail-safe. Uh, for example, oxygen, hydrogen, chlorine, they are important and I can store as much as possible. So, uh, they will have their own uh, storage cells, but rest can share uh, the storage cells. Anyway. This is going to be the entire partitioning. Uh, and okay, that's interesting. Okay. Anyway. And yeah, it will take a while. After that, we will start working with this area, the chemical area. And it will probably. Uh, it will probably. Next day for me. But. In the meantime, I also have to remind you guys. Please do not forget to like and share, uh, like and comment to this video. It actually helps to helps me a lot. So let me just go with the. In Turkish, we call it Angaria. So, and also one more thing, I will also put a quad thingy magigi and we'll place these guys like this and it's probably going to be placed here because the priority is higher and i will just take this one's priority higher okay that's good and you will be thousand okay okay this guy's priority is high, now higher, and if I place this... Yep, it's stored here now. And after a long partitioning party, uh, this is the current state of the storage room. I still keep those guys like this because, yeah, I want them to be voidable. So yeah, that's the current state. Uh, they will probably be moved to some super chests in the future. Uh, but yeah, that's currently how it's going to work. And I also want to reorganize this area a bit because I want those guys to actually look like an actual server rack. So... I will probably do that, and also, I also have to show you something that we are, that we are going to use. Let's take an enemy chest and some, not dense, but normal smart cable, and it should be there. Yeah, a storage bus and enemy interface. Thank you. And... Let's take this and take this and also this. Now place a storage bus here and an interface here and this here. And it uses one channel. Now, what I need to add is also an ME chest. And let's see. This guy is the ingot one. So, if you look here, I don't have any iron ingots. We have some ingots, but not all of them. Actually, I can put some of those too, but anyway. And if I put this guy, as you can see, this can now see the ingots. But, let's come here and take another 
another crafting terminal, and if I place this guy here, well, this can only see the ingots. So, we're going, going to make a subnetwork just for storage. So, at the end, this entire process is going to take one channel. It will use more than one channel, so I will share the P2P tunnel with this room. Both of them are low on channels, and they took two P2P uh, networks by themselves. And I think this looks much more clear, and if we look at this, yeah, we have a... This is the main network, and this is the storage subnetwork. And this, the storage subnetwork, by the way, this is a quartz fiber cable there. So this is directly connected to the storage subnetwork, and yeah, the power comes from that guy. And we have another controller for him. And we have this guy. This guy is partitioned for oxygen yeah and i will partition the other guy hydrogen i think the cells also work so let's do that okay apparently it needs cells and those guys are partitioned and those guys are not partitioned, and they are just going to hold the fluids and place the dual interface. Okay, and let me just grab the oxygen one and place there, there, and fluid auto output. Okay, now, this should be enough, and I will probably put the workbench somewhere else, because it doesn't need any channel, actually. So, let's come here, and I don't have my thingamajiggy with me anymore. So, we will, again, use import bus. Yeah, it starts getting, so let's place acceleration cards, and this is gonna take a while, so let me just craft another dual interface. Okay, oxygen one is done, and let's get the hydrogen. So we will just wait, and I will probably craft a bunch of uh, mul multi-fluid storage cells. And they will just start filling up. And then we will move to the main event. And then this is the end of our super tank wall. Except this part. This will be handled later. And they are... Let me just get here. Right here. All of them. All of them are here. Yeah. By the way, we are also going to use this subnetwork uh, approach in the chemical room. So yeah, this is going to be fun. And as you can see, I currently demolished most of the infrastructure. Actually, I can now demo demolish the benzene infrastructure too. Because, technically, I'm not going to... Well, in my current setup, those guys can pull the weight for a uh, short while, but... Better safe than sorry, right? Anyway... Uh, what I'm also going to do is... Kind of this actually rebuilds every process a bit yeah also as you can see there are some uh some things that also need to be redone so a lot of re 
redoing things. But it will work at the end, and you are... yeah, you are here. Anyway, I also discovered something while doing this, which is... I can actually put little fluids like this to the system, and also, for example, take fluids like this, and re-put them. Yeah. That's actually quite useful, and I try to decorate this area a bit, but I don't think I'm... Uh, I'm successful at all. I don't think I am. I will try something later. I, I will keep trying until something is... Well, a cache. But the fluid storages are quite nice at the moment. And also, uh, sorry, and what? Ah, okay. Yeah, I can see the fluids like this too, which is strange, but it works. It works really well. And I think I didn't show this part in the beginning of the episode, but yeah, I've been using this. And it, 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 I'm adding recipes here. So, yeah, it's time to demolish stuff. And I will probably update when a small system is redone. Also, in our current new system, we're going to use a strange fella. Output bus and output hatch ME version. They are actually working as uh, as interfaces. Yeah, they are exactly working as interfaces, but they directly connect to the multi-block, so it actually triggers less uh, inventory events on the server side. So. That means less TPS loss. And as I already told, we are going to use subnets a lot. And we made our new subnet here. And I also left a bit of the main net too. Why? Because subnets are not good with auto-crafting thingies, so at least for the auto-crafting part, I will still use the main net. So yeah, the, in this chunk, there are currently one, two, and three different Applied Energy 6 network, and I wanted to move to Industrial Cocoa one, but I do not have any yet room. That's actually on me because I kind of sort of postponed the rare earth production, so it's in the table for the next few episodes. Maybe? Kinda? Yeah, I don't know. So let me just handle stuff. And by the way, I put single output, ME output hatch, and if I'm correct, I didn't test it yet. Those two can use this just this and that should be okay and this will uh produce uh what was it i currently freeze a bit ah yeah the fermented biomass and this one will produce charcoal byproduct coal byproduct yeah Charcoal byproducts will actually give us a better yield overall. Yeah, this will give us four forty uh, four thousand uh, charcoal byproduct instead, and it that uh, turns into actually less, but. Yeah, it's a bit less, going to be a bit less, but we are not actually reliant on uh, benzene that much. And after we move to the 
while the better team <laughs> we're gonna have a bunch of uh byproducts but first i need to well i need to move to the industrial cocoa and so rare art it is but let me first handle this room and i think this is a bit over engineered solution but it works it works really well i just need to hook up these guys to here ish and also i need a shutdown mechanism if they everything is full uh actually the important ones are full so let me just think of it and then we move to the plastics Okay, molten polyethylene production is back online, and I just need one more thing. And it is a control mechanism to stop this guy when it's reach. Let's put molten polyethylene. And let's say 20 minutes. How many molten polyethylene do I have? Number uh, polyethylene. Okay. Um, uh, two million should be okay. Two. Okay, two million. Emit fan about the limits okay okay and uh, molten polyethylene and you are let's use this okay molten polyethylene are you emitting redstone i'm not sure let's put this guy here enable with redstone okay Okay, it seems we have some issues. Let me just test something and try to find a solution. Okay, this seems to work, so it's going to be a, a, a bit cross uh, pattern. So, yeah. And also, I think I need to upgrade this guy. With some acceleration upgrades, do I have any acceleration modules here? No, 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 I don't, I don't. Well, it's a bottleneck that I can solve easily. No problem. And I just need to finish the related parts of these three. This is the last point except for this. But that we are mixing with oxygen, so we just have one oxygen input. And for the other chemicals input. So, let me fix everything. And I remade everything else. And polyvinyl chloride is back online. I just need to, again, a control mechanism. And... Where did I put those guys? Ah, machine control cover. And... Wrong place. Okay, you need to be here and... You just need to be... Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Now, let's look at the polyvinyl chloride. Polyvinyl chloride. Uh, let's let's say uh, half half million. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, polyvinyl chloride, molten polyvinyl chloride. Okay, and. Okay. That should be enough. And it's working! Yeah! <laughs> also, we used quad uh, input, uh, input hatch and a capacity card here. 
and also put the acceleration card here to make it faster. And for hydrochloric acids, I put a import, import bus. And also, this is the current basement structure. And yeah, it's doing well. Doing well. Now, onto the bucket list is hydrofluoric acid. We don't have any. We need to make. And I know how to make it. Another LCR. And then... Winry acid. Yeah, this guy. Okay, it's mostly done. I just need to put two more uh, for these. Our previous infrastructure, I just need to put two more LCRs and then I am going to automate a lot more things. And I still didn't put the, well, oil pro uh, production, but we will handle that. In the next episode, I just need to put two more LCRs and then we are done, but I'm also done. <laughs> I need to finish this episode and it actually took um, time, but you already see how our infrastructure is going here. And also I some re did some rearrangements here and this this wing uses eight channels and yeah, four for here and four here. And so uh, we will add more channels here and there. So yeah, this is crafty, And I'm probably going to add a, yeah, I will add something here. Anyway, this is crafty, And have a nice day.